Before you start Lesson 50, make sure you have completed Test I in your Test Masters. Now lesson 50 is on unit multipliers and unit conversions. We kind of did some unit conversions in Lesson 49 when we were adding mixed measures where we had to we had more than 12 inches, so we changed it to feet and inches and things like that. Pretty soon you're going to have to be doing some more complex conversion problems where you're converting from one type of unit to another. And this method of using unit multipliers is a very effective method, a very easy method to help you understand how to convert from one unit to another. Now most of these problems in this book, most of the concepts that you're learning are just really, really important. And if you don't get these down good, then you're not going to do as well in your higher level math classes. There's just so much good stuff in this book to help you do good later. And that's one reason there's so many practice problems and all the supplemental exercises in the back of the book to help you if you do get stuck on something. Make sure you're taking advantage of every tool that you have here, including this CD, rewinding the CD when you need to, when you don't understand something, and making sure you have a concept down before you go on. And this lesson 50 on unit multipliers and unit conversions is another really important lesson. One thing that makes it so important is it'll help make your science easier as well. Anytime you have any mathematics applications in your science classes, if you understand unit multipliers and unit conversions, then that'll make a lot of your math that you deal with in science-related classes easier as well. Now, what do we mean when we talk about a unit multiplier? Let's just start with an example of converting feet to inches. Let's say we had four feet and we wanted to convert that to inches. Well, you probably already know that there's 12 inches in a foot, and so you would just say 4 times 12 is 48 inches. 4 feet equals 48 inches. Now what I want you to do, and you need to do it this way because eventually when you have more difficult problems, you'll know the steps that are involved. Instead of saying just doing it in your head, 4 feet equals 12 inches, let's use a unit multiplier to solve this problem. And what unit multipliers are, and all they are is a fraction where the numerator and the denominator are the same value. And what you do, you know that one foot equals 12 inches, right? So that table of equivalent measures in the back of your book, you can look back there and you can see that. It's got all these different equivalent measures. One foot equals 12 inches. You can write that like a fraction. One foot over 12 inches, or you can write it 12 inches over 1 foot. Now, just think about this for a second. Think about what we just said. We said that 1 foot equals 12 inches. So that fraction, 1 foot over 12 inches, or the other way, 12 inches over 1 foot, that really just equals 1, right? Because you have a similar value over a similar value, just like the numbers 5 over 5. That equals 1, doesn't it? You have similar quantities in the numerator and the denominator. 12 inches looks different than 1 foot because your units are different, but we know that those both represent the exact same value, right? So 12 inches over 1 foot is just equal to 1. And the trick here, or the key here, not the trick, but the key here is to understand that if you took that and you multiplied 4 foot by 12 inches over 1 foot, in essence, you're just multiplying 4 feet by 1, aren't you? And what you can do is cancel the feet units because you have feet in the numerator, feet in the denominator. Anytime you have just a number like 4 feet, you can write that as a fraction if you put it over the number 1. So you can think of 4 feet as 4 feet over 1. And you have feet in the numerator, feet in the denominator. Those cancel. Units cancel just like factors cancel. For example, if you had 3 times 2 over 2 times 5, 
you know that you could simplify that problem by canceling the twos because those are the same factors. And so you'd simplify that to 3 over 5. It's the same thing with unit multipliers. You're multiplying them together, right? You're doing 4 times 12, but then you have to think of the units separately. What you're really doing here is feet times inches divided by feet. And so you have feet in the numerator, feet in the denominator. They cancel out. And what you do is just multiply your numbers. 4 times 12 is 48. And then you just have inches for your units. That's what a unit multiplier does. It's a numerator and denominator that represent equal quantities. The, they look different because their units are different. But you multiply them by another unit. You take that mul unit multiplier, multiply it by another unit, and that changes your units. Let's try another one. Three pounds. Let's convert that to ounces. So what you would do is just think about your equivalent measure of pounds to ounces. You have 16 ounces in one pound or you can write it one pound per 16 ounces. Now think about this. You're going to use one of those unit multipliers to convert pounds to ounces. Let's say you do one pound per 16 ounces. Now the whole goal here of using the unit multiplier is to change your units. Look at what you have here. You end up with three pounds times pounds. Three pounds squared over ounces. And then you have that 16 in the denominator. 3 sixteenths pounds squared per ounce. That doesn't make any sense. That's not what you want to do. You wanted to convert pounds to ounces. So what you have to do is set your unit multiplier up so that you cancel your units. And that means you need the 16 ounces per 1 pound. You need that unit multiplier. And see, look now, you have pounds divided by pounds. Those units cancel. And now you just multiply your numbers together. 3 times 16 is 48. And you all, all you have for units left are ounces. 48 ounces. You have to think of the numerical part on these problems separate from the units. Treat both of them the same though. You do 3 times 16 over 1 or just 3 times 16 is 48 and then your pounds divided by pounds that cancels out and you're left with ounces. Remember you can always write the number that you start with over 1 to think of that as a fraction if that helps you understand the unit multipliers a little bit better. Remember what you use a unit multiplier for. You're using it to convert from one unit to another. Let's do a practice problem. Convert 7 yards to inches. Now, what I do every single time I do some kind of unit conversion is I write down the units that have been given first. So they gave me 7 yards. So I write that down and I know I want to convert that to inches. Well, let's just think about that. How are we going to do that? What unit multiplier are we going to use? And we can use more than one unit multiplier because we're just multiplying factors one after another. Seven yards, there's three feet in a yard, right? So we could convert to feet and then we know that there's 12 inches in a foot. We could use two unit multipliers to solve this problem. So let's say seven yards. We have that written down. Let's convert that to feet. So we need to cancel the yards. That means we say 3 feet over 1 yard. Remember, we can always write that value that we put out there first over 1 to think of it like a fraction. And look at what we've done here. Yards divided by yards. Our yards units are canceled. Now we just have feet units, which we want to change to inches. And we don't say one foot over 12 inches. We say 12 
inches over one foot. Remember, any equivalent measures, there's always two ways to write the unit multiplier. Three feet per yard or one yard per foot. Twelve inches per foot or one foot per twelve inches. It just depends on what you're trying to do in your unit conversion problem as to how you write them. And now look what we've done. We have feet divided by feet. So those units cancel. They cancel because they're factors. In the numerator, what we really have, if we look at all of our units, we have yards times feet times inches. And in the denominator, we have yards times feet. And see those common factors cancel and we're left with inches. Now, look at your numerical parts. Let's just do all of the numbers that we have there. We have 7 times 3 times 12 over 1 times 1 times 1 or just 1. So we end up with 21 times 12 and that's equal to 200 and 52 and our units are inches 252 inches there are 252 inches in 7 yards a good thing to do on unit conversion problems is just to think about your answer think about whether that makes sense would you expect to have a whole bunch of inches in 7 yards well yes you would 12 inches is 1 foot there's 3 feet in a yard that means there's 36 inches in a yard and you've got seven of them so you would expect a large number of inches for your answer. You might want to do what I just did here as far as looking at all of the units together as factors and seeing that you cancel and you get just one unit of inches. That's what we're wanting. Remember we wanted to convert two inches so it's really important that you make sure that your unit multipliers are set up and things cancel so that you get the units you're looking for. You might want to do that separate from your numerical part and then go in and do the numerical part. Just multiply all the numerical factors together in the numerator and denominator and simplify that answer. 252 inches are equal to 7 yards. Let's do another one. 11 miles is how many feet? Well, what we want to do there is convert miles to feet. So you might want to look in your table of equivalent measures at the back of the book, see how many feet there are in a mile. You just need one unit multiplier to solve this problem. Remember, what you do on a unit multiplier problem when you're converting from one unit to another is write down the units that are given first. 11 miles. That's the value plus the units that were given. 11 miles. You can always write that over 1, think of it as a fraction, and convert that to feet. And there are 5,280 feet in 1 mile. Now let's do like what we did in the previous problem. We worked with all of our units separate. And let's just think about all of those. We had miles times feet over miles. Remember, we're doing unit multiplier problems here. Everything's multiplication. Multiply the numerators, multiply the denominators. And we have miles times feet divided by miles. That means we have a common factor of miles. You just treat them just like you do numbers. And you're left with feet for your units. Now, the numerical part, we have 11 times 5,280 over 1 times 1, or we can just think of the 11 times 5,280. And if you do that, you get 58,080. Feet. And that's your answer. 11 times 5280 is 58,080. Now just think about that. Does that make sense? If there's 5,280 feet in one mile, if you had 11 miles, you would expect quite a few feet for that. 
So that answer does make sense because like in 10 miles, you'd have 52,800 feet. 11 miles, you'd have more than that, 58,080. Think about your answer on these problems. Think about whether that unit conversion that you did makes sense, if the numerical value sounds correct. You can't really check your work on these problems, so you just have to think about it a little bit and just make sure that that value makes sense. Let's do one more problem. One cubit equals 18 inches. That was a common unit used in the Old Testament times in the Bible. One cubit equals 18 inches. Joshua built a wall that was five cubits thick. How many inches is this? Okay, so think about this problem. It's a unit multiplier problem. We're converting from one unit to another. They've given us five cubits for the thickness of the wall, and we want to know how many inches that is. So, as in all unit multiplier problems, we write down what's given first, five cubits. Now we want to convert that to inches. We've been given an equivalent measure there. One cubit equals 18 inches. So what we need to do then is have 18 inches over one cubit. 18 inches over one cubit and therefore our cubits will cancel, right? And we just do 5 times 18, which is 90, and have our units there of inches. 90 inches. That's how much 5 cubits is equal to. So that wall was 90 inches thick. So on that problem, we just had to understand how to make a unit multiplier. All it is is anytime you have equivalent measures, you can make a unit multiplier. And all a unit multiplier is is a fraction, right? And that fraction is equal to 1 because the numerator and denominator represent equal quantities. They don't look equal because the units are different that are being used to express those quantities. If you need more practice, do the practice problems in the book on this. And also their supplemental exercises in the back of the book. These are super important. If you get these down good now, I can guarantee you that your algebra and your science later on in high school will be a whole lot easier for you. Okay, well that's all for lesson 50.